morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at Rock Faith International Ministries, where we are removing walls of separation in order to serve. We thank you that today. Um, and as I often say, you might say in order to serve who? To serve you. We are here as a ministry with our doors open wide to serve you our community, our churches, our nation even, however we can serve, we are here to serve the people of God. We give honor to God today, who is the Lord of our life, the Lord of this ministry, the keeper of our souls. Want to thank God for our pastor this morning. Again, he is out at Weber Memorial Church delivering the word of God, and we are keeping him lifted in prayer as he goes forth in delivering what God has put on his heart for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come before your presence. We are so honored, dear God, to be called your children, to be chosen by you, God. We understand that you chose us, God, that we didn't even know about you, but you sought us out, God, and you chose us. And for that, we are grateful today. We honor you for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you today. We ask today that your word goes forth and that the hearts of those who hear this message today will have a heart, oh God, to follow after your word, to make your word a part of our daily living, applicable to where we are right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, dear God, for you being God. And we ask that you would cover us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Our Bible decree here at Rock Faith International Ministries, this is my Bible, God's word. In it is eternal life. And because God's word is my guide, I will not add nor take anything from it. This is the word of God. And I thank God for his word. You know, when you think about the word of God, you think about how awesome it is. I do. I think about the power of his word. You know, even when God created the earth, he spoke a word. That is the word of God. He spoke a word and the world came into existence. Do you ever think about the power of God's word, the power of who he is, praise God. And sometimes if we would just think about that, I cannot see how we would not humble ourselves under the mighty power of this great God and serve him, especially in the day and time that we currently live in. Because we are living in some, some serious times, saints. Friend, we are living in some serious times and we need to step back and think about it. We need to step back and think about that in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk to us today about, it's going to sound a little conflicting in my subject, but as we come together in it, it's going to all come together, just like in a soup, just like making a cake, just like ragu, it's going to all be in there and it's going to all come together to the glory of God. You know, typically when somebody tells you as a common practice, they'll say, wait here, you know, until I come back, you know? And so usually what we do is we take literally what that person says. For example, if you were in a department store and you asked for assistance and the, the clerk says to you, um, just wait here until I come back. Um, typically people stand there and wait. But what they're really saying is, I want you to be in a position so that when you do, when I do come back, that you will be easy accessible, that I can reach out to you and give you the assistance that you need. So today I, I want to talk about, you know, sometimes even in that um, particular situation, you don't just stand there and do nothing. Sometimes we browse, we walk around, we look in that same vicinity, we look for something else that might be compatible to what we want or something else that we think we might be interested in. But nonetheless, we don't just stand there necessarily and hold our hands and wait, but we are making ourselves available so that when that person comes back, they can connect with us. However, in, in the literal action of the word, you know, it, 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 we stay there. But it's not really meaning to just stand there. As the master in the parable in Luke 14, 19 and 13, he gave 10 servants, right? He had talents, which is money, equated to money. He had talents, 10 talents that he gave to these three servants. And he said to them in Luke 19 and 13, he said for them to occupy uh, 
and occupy uh, until he came back. He said, I want you to hold on to this until I come back. But what he was really saying, he wasn't literally saying, just stand here and hold these talents and don't do nothing with them until I come back. He was basically saying to them, I want you to be a good steward over these talents, this money, this gift that I put in your hands. And to many, it means just hold on to it. But what he was really saying, I want you to use it to my glory and to your benefit. However, it can be of help to you or to me. I want you to occupy this till I come, right? So it means as a good steward, that as God blesses you and me with something, he wants us to utilize it to the glory of God. So these servants that God, that this master had given these talents to, he gave one, 10, and that one multiplied their talent. He gave to another and that, that steward said, I, I have multiplied what you have given me five more times over. And then to that third servant, he said to him, master, I took what you gave me. I kept it. I wrapped it up in a napkin and I still have it for you when you come back. So if you think about that third servant, he literally took what the master said. He occupied it. He kept it, but he didn't do anything with it. He wrapped it in a napkin and nothing went out of his hand. Nothing came into his hand. So therefore, he did not make good use of what the master, the nobleman, had put into his charge. Nothing happened with the space that he had given him. And so to this is the same thing that we are doing today. If we think about the environment, the culture that we live in, we are just taking up space and we are doing nothing with it. We are being unfruitful, we are being unfaithful, and we are being unworthy stewards of what God has put in our hands. And you might say, well, Pastor Jay, what do you mean we are unfruitful and unworthy and unfaithful? Just that. We come, I wanna give you this scenario. We come to church, we occupy a seat, we hear the word of God, we get up from our seats every Sunday or every whenever we go to church, and we go out with that word that God has allowed that teacher, that preacher, that evangelist to give to us, and then we go out and we do nothing with what we have heard. Now, I want to ask your opinion on that. Is that being faithful and fruitful and worthy of what you have been granted? The only thing that we do about what we have heard is we try to look for a way to get around not doing it. Think about that now. We try to look for a way. You know, an example. I heard the word. I heard what they said, but they didn't really mean that. You're doing like Eve did in the garden when the, the serpent spoke to her. And he said, but they, they, he didn't really mean that. That preacher didn't really mean that. And so we look at a way that we can circumvent the process, that we can get around it. And we don't really have to do the word because it really didn't mean that. He really didn't mean what he said. God's word is not a literal word. So we try to work the process. But that's not what God is pleased with. And so my subject today is, I know you probably thought I was already bringing the message, and I am. But my subject today is, Continue serving while you wait. Continue serving while you wait. As these stewards in this scripture, you know, he just sat there and held it. He didn't do anything with what God gave him. But today I want to impress in your heart and in your mind. You might be going through something today, but I encourage you to not stop where you are but continue serving God, continue believing in his word, continue 
in the path that he has called you on. The definition of the word serve, it is perform duties or services for another person or organization. The definition of the word wait, it is stay where one is or delay action until a particular time or until a particular something else happens, right? And when you look at these two words, they, they look the opposite, right? You Because you say, well, how can I serve? And why and while I'm waiting, how can I wait and serve? That that that's uh you know that doesn't that doesn't add up. So these two words sound the opposite of other each other. In retrospect, the one is saying to do something while the other is saying to take no action, right? So I want to bring it all together for us today that when God is telling us to trust in him, to believe in him. That is irregardless to whatever else is going on in your life. That's servitude. That's servitude to the God that we serve. I want to bring them together today in this message so that while we are waiting on God, we will learn how uh, he wants us to continue doing what he called us to do. We should not set aside idle and do nothing like that servant did. He just held on to it. He just held on to that, that money, that talent. And at the end of the day, that's all he had. But God wants us to invest in the kingdom of God. He wants us to, to push forward in the kingdom of God. If you knew the God that you serve, really know him, you would know that he is a God of action. He's a God that makes things happen. And because we are created in his image, he says to us, I want you to follow after what I put inside of you and make things happen through me, not of yourself, but through me. Do we understand that souls are living this world by the minute without Christ? Many without Christ. And that's that's no fault of saying the word has not been given but the thing of it is, every person has their own choice. Every person has a choice to make. And we cannot make a choice for that person. Neither can we make them make the choice. But what we can do is we cannot sit idly by and don't give them the options of what they have to make a choice by. For example, would you, are you, would you love to give your life to Christ? Or do you want to continue serving the devil? So there, 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 there's, those are the two options that we have. And so, but we want to make sure that as a child of God, as a disciple of Christ, that we are getting the word of God out. And you say, well, getting the word of God out to who? Getting it out in your home. Because the Bible teaches us that, you know, that's not a scripture, but charity, it does. It starts at home first and then it's spread abroad. How dare we go out? and try to save the world. When our homes, we got children, grandchildren right in our homes that are dying who don't know God, who have not been told about who God is. So it starts right in our home. That's your first mission, mother, father, children. That's your first mission. That's your first evangelistic feel is to get the word out in your home, to get the word out in your neighborhoods. When you say, well, how do I get the word out in my neighborhoods? Live a life. Don't be all the time fighting with your neighbor, having a quarrel. Just live a life of Christ. Let them see what God looks like. Demonstrate it through your life. Show love and compassion and kindness and gentleness to your neighbors. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then we got to get the word out in our churches. You say, well, get the word out in our churches. That's where the word of God is taught. Would you, be, you would be surprised to know how the word of God is missing so much in our churches. There's false doctrines that's being taught. There's word that's being held back because people don't want to hurt people's feelings. There's word that's being held back because we want to grow our churches and have mega ministry so we don't tell the whole truth like they say, the, tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth because we hold back on the word of God. So we've got to get the word out in our churches. 
to teach the word, to live the word, to be about who Christ is calling us to be about. We got to get the word out in the cities that we live in, the communities that we live in, and even in our nation. And you say, well, how can I, I'm not that big of a person that I could get it out to our nation. When we call for the national prayer for our nation and our prayer, your prayer is huge. Prayer is the most powerful weapon as a child of God that you have. But do you utilize that? Do you utilize that tool, that weapon that God has given you as a child of God to communicate to him, to ask him as the word says, what you want? and allow him to work in your behalf, praise God. So we've got to get the word out. So in getting this word out, we are waiting on God. But while we are waiting on God, we are also serving him, serving him to the best of our ability. Our lesson text today comes out of Isaiah 40 and 31, a very, very well-known scripture and one that I love dearly. It says, but They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe on the last time that I spoke, that scripture was also a part of my teaching. But you can bring it in so many ways. So I want you to eat from the plate today from this perspective of waiting but while you are waiting to serve God, because you mount up, the Lord is gonna renew your strength. He's gonna allow you to mount up on wings as eagles. And then he's gonna allow you to run, hallelujah, and not get weary. You know, sometimes when I'm out on my bicycle and you know, little granny riding the bicycle and I, I'm out there and my, my body begins to get a little faint. But you know, I get a, a, a whiff of encouragement And I talked to myself and I said, Janice, you can't give up right now. Just make it up this hill because after you get up that hill, you know, it's going to be some smooth travel. But you just go ahead and let your heart pump and go on up that hill because in a few minutes, you're going to have a woosaw moment and you're going to be able to breathe a little bit more easier. And so in our going, yes, we get faint a little bit sometimes. But God says in that time, he's going to allow you to not be weary while you're, you are getting a little faint. Praise God. So this passage in Isaiah, it was a time where the prophet Isaiah, God had sent him to speak to the children of Israel because they had been beat up on every side. They had gone through some stuff. They had gone through captivity, Babylonian captivity. They had been in wars and been defeated. But God sent them an encouraging word through the prophet Isaiah. And he was letting them know, I wanna encourage you and remind you of the omnipotent and powerful God that you serve. The God that brought you through the Red Sea, the God that brought you through the wilderness, the God that let you come out of captivity of Pharaoh. I'm saying, I'm that same God. I am all powerful, all knowing, all seeing God. That's who I am. And I came by through Isaiah today to let you know that I am that almighty God. But I want you to know that you might be going through something right now. But I want you to still reference me, respect me, and honor me. And in your waiting of my deliverance, I want you to still serve me in the capacity that you know that I have called you to serve me in. God wanted them to know that he had not forgotten them. Although they had turned their backs on him, all they had done, they had started serving idol gods, you know, bringing it home to us. We get in situations, we get in tights where we stop serving God. We stop um because we're we're going through a bad place. We and, and you know, as we were talking about this morning, one of the first things that we do is we stop going to church. We stop uh, coming before God. We stop praying. We stop all the things that we need to do. But God is saying to us, I need you to keep on serving while you wait on me. Know that I am God. 
I'm still God. They have been defeated in many battles. They have won some, they have lost some, the children of Israel. But God said in the whole scheme of things, I want you to know that I am almighty God. I'm still the same God for you then as I am for my children today. I want you to recognize that because, you know, men's hearts in this day and time that we are living in, their hearts are fainting. They're losing hope. They're giving up just because they have not seen Jesus crack the sky yet. But that does not mean that his word is not true and that he's not coming back. He is coming back for a church without spot or blemish, meaning the one who is continuing to serve. It does not mean that you don't have some, some stuff going on in your life, but it means that you are continuing to look to the God, to look to the God of your salvation. He wanted to teach them that in the times that they were waiting on him, through the many times of captivity, he wanted to teach them how to be renewed, praise God, in their waiting, praise the name of the Lord. He wanted to teach them how to be strong in their waiting, and he wanted to teach them how to keep moving forward in their waiting, hallelujah. He wanted to teach them how to be renewed, how to be strong, and how to keep it moving in their waiting. These are the same lessons that he wants to teach us in the culture that we live in. Because like I said before, this is a, it's a bad place that we're in. But if you're not in Christ, you are going to, you are going to be most miserable. You're going to be most miserable. Do you understand that that's why people take things to the bridge? That's why they run their cars off and they take drugs and overdose themselves. And they are so inundated with drug addictions and all alcoholism and homosexuality and um, uh, pornography and all of the stuff. See, people are looking for fixes in this life. But the only fix that we can have is the fix. Jesus, the Christ, the son of God, if you have not accepted him, then you are in a bad fix and you need to a fix in your life. You don't need a temporary fix, but you need a permanent fix. And Jesus Christ is a permanent fix. So what are you saying, Pastor Jay? I'm simply saying that once we turn our lives over to God, it doesn't mean that you're not going to go through something. But what it does mean is you don't have to result to the bottle. You don't have to resmoke, res result to the cigarette. You ain't, you don't have to resort to all of that stuff. You don't have to resort to watching pornography. You don't have to resort to walking the streets and flaunting your body because you've got a permanent fix, which is Christ Jesus. You can go to his word and his word will give you comfort. It will give you strength. It will help you get through the tough times in life. So first point, being renewed while you wait, being renewed, being renewed. Second Corinthians 4 and 16, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying. When you look in the mirror every day, you got to see that the outer you is decaying. I don't know about you, but when I look in there, I see wrinkles and, and stuff, and I see some stuff that's missing and some stuff that's gapping. It's, it's a sign to us that we are decaying. This, this body is decaying, but we are not discouraged in that. Praise God. Yet the inner man is being renewed day by day. And that's the difference when you have Christ. The outer man might, yeah, it, it, it might look a little weary, but the inner man, just like the scripture is saying, it's mounting up on wings as eagles. It's getting ready to soar. Praise God. Hallelujah. If y'all could just get what I'm trying to get to, over to you today, being strengthened, praise God. He's renewing you through his word while you wait on him. Psalms 103 and 5, it says, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. You know, I, I, I love to see old people that have a renewed energy. They are, youth, they are so youthful in spirit. 
They didn't let what they see in the mirror disturb them to the point that they started acting like what they saw. But their youth was renewed and it's only being renewed by the word of God. As the lesson text teaches us today, when you wait on God, he renews your strength. As you, as the eagle waits while he is mounting, he's in a mounting stance, right? He's in the stance and it looks like nothing is happening with him while he's in this stance, praise God, of being mounting, mounted up. It may look like uh, nothing has happened, but there's a transformation. Hallelujah. There's a transformation process that is occurring and the natural eye can't see that transformation. The natural ear cannot hear the transformation. Praise God. And the natural feelings of us cannot feel the transformation. And our thought, the mind, it cannot even fathom the transformation. Praise God. But believe me, you, transformation is happening. There is something that is supernatural that's happening to that person that has decided to serve while they are waiting on God. And even that person cannot explain it. It's unexplainable. If you try to explain it, you couldn't explain why you, how you feel with all the crazy that's going on in your life, with the people that have turned their back on you, with the people that continue to talk about you while you do God's work, with the, the situations of illnesses and sicknesses. And when the doctor has said, there's nothing else I can do, but you continue to serve. See, you can't explain that because it's unexplainable, because God has given you a, a strength, a, a renewedness with this inside of you. See, you can't explain why you keep doing virtual like this, while you waiting for God to bless you with a facility to move into. But God says, will you serve me through this method that I've given you to serve me in while you wait on me? See, I have learned, hallelujah, how to patient myself and wait on God because in your patience, possess you your soul. While you are waiting on God, you better know it that he's working in your behalf. He's working to your favor, saint of God, child of God, disciple of the Lord, you better know it. Your spiritual strength is being renewed because you've decided to continue to serve God in the midst of all of that. In the midst of all of that, you didn't let your focus get off with somebody you heard over here talking about you. When you know they're trying to start confusion, but you didn't let your focus get off. You stayed the course. Because God said, let them run their mouth while I run my business with you. Let them do what they do while you stay focused in me. You have decided to keep doing what God has called you to do. Despite the obstacles that have come against you right now, you are being renewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are being renewed while you wait on God. And then you be strong while you wait. Ephesians 6 and 10, it says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I love that scripture. I love all. I love God's word. How do we be strong? How do we be strong? We can only be strong by the power of God, of his might, and by the armor that he provides us. You know, David was a little scrawny guy, but, and he didn't put on the armor that the Philistine had on. He didn't put on that heavy shield and that heavy sword, but David had another weapon. He understood that the power of God could work through him because he believed in God. Now I asked you the question today, do you believe that God is a God? That God is a God that can give you strength, that can renew you and that can keep you strong? While you're going through adversities, while you are being, while you are waiting on him, is he's the one that strengthens you to be able to endure through the tough times. Praise God. So, no, usually we address ourselves in the mirror, right? When we are, when we get dressed each day. But typically, you know, in this, in this passage of scripture where it says be strong, and then, they, then Paul went on to say, put on the whole armor of God. 
So typically when we go out in the morning, we dress ourselves from head to toe and, and we look at the, in the mirror and, and, and we don't put on partial attire, right? You don't go out of the house with your, with one black shoe, one blue shoe. You don't go out of the house with your hair sticking up in the middle like an alfalfa, alfalfa from the little rascals, right? You don't go out of the house uh, with your clothes on the wrong side. You don't do it because you've dressed yourself. You've armored yourself by through the word of God. As a child of God, you don't forget your blessed breastplate. You don't forget your helmet of salvation. You don't forget to shard your feet with the preparation of the gospel of truth and peace, right? You go out of the house equipped and that's how you are strengthened through the word of God. So this may sound comical to us and how we dress in the natural, but there's nothing funny about it when you go out and you have to do a presentation and you stand up there before a great audience and they say, hey, Madam Speaker, your dress is on the wrong side. You can't stop right there and pull your dress up over your head and change it. Oh, give me a second, let me change. You gotta be armored up. You gotta be ready to roll. So there's nothing funny about it as a child of God if you are not armored up in strength of God to be strong with the armor that he has given you. So it is in our spiritual life. Leaving off pieces of your armor leaves you vulnerable, leaves you vulnerable to the attacks of the wicked one, to the attacks of Satan, to the attacks of the, the deceiver. That's no laughing matter. When you're a child of God, you don't want to be caught without your armor. So God wants us to be strong in him and in the power of his might. And in doing so, we armor up. Don't leave home without it. You need it. That's why if you don't armor up, you go out here and the devil beats up on you. He, he beats up on you because you, you didn't have your armor right. He will attack you in the chest plate of the shield because that's where your faith is. Do you understand that your faith is what keeps you going and what keeps you moving forward in Christ? That's how we are strengthened. That's how we are strengthened. Our salvation is our headgear. That's the headgear for us that keeps our mind sound, our salvation in God. And then the sword of the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. You don't want to leave home without Holy Spirit. You got to have him. You got to have him. Why? Because he leads you, directs you, protects you, gives you soundness throughout the day. He brings back to your remembrance what you need to know. Right? You got to have Holy Spirit. So we need this. We need this so that we can go throughout the day and be protected through God's strength. God wants us to know that the strength that we possess really does not come from us, but it is his strength. He wants us to be strengthened while we wait. And so the only way you can serve while you're waiting is you gotta have the strength to do so, right? So in order to be strengthened while you serving and waiting on God, you've got to have the word of God. And how many times do I say to us, make sure you read the word of God for yourself. Make sure you are armored up through the word of God. You know, get off of the meat, the milk of the word. It was an interesting um, uh, uh, article I was listening to. Um, and it talked about milk, the milk of God's word. When it said that milk is processed, and, and, and that's why I tell us to read the word of God, right? Because milk is processed through the body of another. Think about it. A baby, when he gets milk or she, when they get milk, it comes through the mother. When you go to church on Sunday, just like we are now, and you hear the word of God, it's processed through me. I'm giving you what God has downloaded into me, but it's a process to you. And so you are now getting milk. But what you need to do is you need to step away you need to open the word of God, praise God. You need to get the steak, the meat for yourself, the word. Let God minister to your heart, speak to your heart, download to you directly 
so that you don't have to go through third party processing to get your food, to get your food. Even older, when people get older, they give them processed food. It's either the process through a blender or some kind of way is through another method. At this point, they cannot process the meat like it should be. But I say to us, and I want this is just a sidebar because it's important that we get the word of God and that we begin to apply the word of God to us. Ask God to reveal to you what his word is saying to you. Give you insight and direction, right? You don't have to run to the priest all the time. You don't have to run to the Pope, but you can go to God. You can go to God. That's why Jesus came on the scene so that you could be strengthened through the word of God for yourself. He'll download into you just like he downloads into me. You just got to go before him and ask him to help you and reveal to you and give you revelation knowledge. Praise God. The Bible teaches us he is no respecter of person, but you just got to come to him and you got to ask him for it. Praise God. We have not because we ask not. So God wants to strengthen us through this process, but he wants us to be strengthened. He wants us to, as we are waiting on him to be strengthened so that we can serve him. Praise the name of the Lord. Be strengthened while you wait on God, because this is what he wants you to do. He wants to show you that he, what he has in store that's beyond your finding out. You haven't even thought about what God wants to do for you. You haven't heard about what he wants to do for you, but he will reveal it to you in the spirit when you come before him. And then he wants us to keep moving while we wait, right? And you might say, well, Pastor Jay, what are you talking about? Keep moving while, you, while you're waiting on him. Keep moving, keep moving. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, right? For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. As we have opportunity, the 10th verse says, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. God wants us to continue doing what we know is the right thing to do. Keep it moving while we wait on him. We don't have time to sit around and drown in our own little pity party. We don't have time for that. We don't have time to sit around and say, woe is me. Did you hear what they said about me? Do you know what they did to me? Right? We don't have time for that. But what we do have time for to do is go before God and say, God, I know that you will fight for me. You promised to fight every battle. You promised to see me through. It said that with your right strong hand, you bring deliverance. That's the God that we serve. And so, God, I'm coming before you. I'm not going to sit here and cry and whimper over what somebody said or did to me, but I'm going to trust in you. I know that the word of God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But I'm not even asking you, Lord, to strike them down right now. But I just want to pray for them and keep them lifted that they will see you. Because that's what our prayer should be. That our enemy, that they will see God. Because when they see God, then they too are going to come to him and they're going to start serving him. Praise the name of the Lord. We have to keep it moving, y'all. We have to keep it moving. We don't have time to sit by the wayside. We don't have time to go tiptoeing through the tulips and picking flowers along the way. We've got to be about our father's business. Sure, discouragement comes. Disappointments come. Things come in our life. That's called life. But God says, I am giving you some strength to get through that. I am empowering you through the word of God so that you can keep it moving. If you are waiting on God for breakthrough, what you need to learn how to do is keep it moving. Don't stop because when you stop, see, you give place to the enemy. You give place for him to start speaking into your, your heart, into your mind. Don't, the Bible teaches us that. Give no place. Give him no place. Give no place to the devil. Don't give him no place. Don't even give him a crack, an inch, a nothing. But keep it moving. Keep it moving. If anybody, uh, uh, there's a song that we used to sing. It says, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? You just tell them I'm saved. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. I got Jesus 
on my side and I'm running for my life. I'm moving. I'm keeping it moving because God told me to keep it moving. This is how we stay rooted and grounded in God by moving. Praise God. And you say, well, how are you going to stay rooted? If you came out keeping it moving because the word of God is rooted in your heart. So that means that wherever you go, hallelujah, hallelujah, wherever you stand, wherever you are speaking, the word is rooted in you. Hallelujah. And nobody can pluck that out of your heart. David said in Psalms 119 and 11, he said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And how could he say that? He kept it moving. And that's what we've got to do. we got to keep moving while we are serving God. We've got to be diligent in our walk with him. we got to be faithful to the cause. we got to be fruitful in these times that we are living in and let Christ work through us. Keep it moving while you wait. Ask God what he wants you to do in and, 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 and any situation. If God has given you something to do, don't look at it as a small task. Because if he gave it to you, that means it's worth working on. It's worth doing. It needs to be done. So while you are waiting on God, keep moving. Be renewed. Be strong. And keep it moving. Keep it moving in the Lord. Don't let people stop you. Don't let situations stop you. You might not have a job, but don't let that stop you. Keep trusting in God. Keep looking to him who is the author and the finisher of your faith. If I have not told you anything today, I pray that you will keep serving God while you are waiting on him. I challenge you today, get in and stay in a diligent and faithful work for Christ. Don't let people deter you. Somebody told me years ago when I was struggling in church, because every time I turned around, it seemed like something was catching me and it was just throwing me off. One of the sisters came by to me one Sunday and she said, Janice, you got to learn how to get above the people. See, y'all remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was a little midget man, the little short man that was in the Bible. And he called out, but he and he, he was low of statue, so he couldn't see Jesus. But what did he do? He went and got above the people. He got in a tree. So he says, I'm not going to let this hinder me. He kept it moving. He got up in that tree and he hollered out and called out to Jesus. And Jesus finally heard him and he said, Zacchaeus, what would you have of me? And he said, Lord, that I might see. Praise God. He got above the people. And what did God, Jesus, grant to him? He granted to him his sight because he was keeping it moving. And so if you want anything from God, you better learn how to keep it moving while you are waiting on him. Trust in the Lord while you wait on him. Trust in him because, you know, sometimes we don't look at trust as an action word. But while you're waiting, you got to have trust. You got to have confidence and, and faith in God. You got to be diligent before him. You got to be willing to sacrifice. All of these are verbs. All of these are action words, things that God requires of us while we are waiting on him. I encourage you today, be strengthened by God's word while you wait. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you today to be a part of, of the kingdom of God. I'm not even saying Rock Faith Ministry. Sure, you are welcome. But more importantly, see, Rock Faith is just a, a, a vehicle to get people into the kingdom of God. But guess what? You can go straight on to the kingdom and say, God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. So if you don't know him today, I invite you to come and invite Christ Jesus in your life as your personal Lord and Savior by confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And after you've done that, get in a Bible believing and teaching church where you will constantly hear the word of God for your growth. Because once you get saved, you better believe the enemy, he's after you and he's not going to stop there. And so I want you to get into a church that teaches and preaches the word of God and lives the word of God. Praise God. Not just a lip service church, but a church that is really sold out for God. 
And I pray to, that you will give your life to him. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your word that has gone forth. I pray today, God, that you will touch hearts today, that you, oh God, will be to the people what they need you to be. Savior, Lord, King, Deliverer, whatever it is, God, source, resource, financer, healer, deliverer, whatever it is, be to them. God, and I thank you for it. I thank you for this word today. I pray that it will go out to the masses and that they will know that you are God and that you sent your son Jesus to die for the world. And that's how much you love us. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If the word of God has touched you in any way today, please go on our website, www.rockfaithimi.org. And put a comment or something out there. Put a prayer request in. Let us know that you have heard in, uh, and were blessed by this ministry. There are different, there's a lot of information on our webpage. Please go out there. Um, in the coming weeks, we're going to be streaming live through YouTube and Facebook all at the same time and through our GoToMeeting app. We encourage you to please continue to support our ministry, support the kingdom of God, and we thank you for everything that you do. God bless you until we meet again. Amen.